I have a suggestion. Oh, wonderful. Because it'll be impressive enough. The fact that this child has not gotten any immunizations previously yes. means this poor child will have to be tortured with six different injections at the same time. And if you would like to put those six up at the one visit, at her first visit to get all these immunizations, I'm happy to do that. A child at their six-month shot, they would receive DTAP, correct? Correct. They would receive polio. Correct. Hep B. Correct. Eumococcal? Um, uh, yes. Hib? It depends. It depends on the product that was used in the first two mm -hmm. sessions. Same, same issue with catching up a two-and-a-half-year-old, right? Sa same, same choice. Same okay. choice. Yeah, right. in this case, yes. Um, and at, excuse me, at two-and-a-half years of age, you're saying getting six vaccines is torture, but a six-month-old would have to receive, we just counted, one, two, three, four, five vaccines, correct? Um, aluminum adjuvants are using vaccines, correct? Correct. <clears throat> Why are you going to imagine to use the vaccine? Because they make the vaccine more effective. Okay. Um, and how do they do that? I don't know. Okay. What's an antigen? An antigen is a, typically a protein that, um, in this case it would be, if you're talking about vaccines, an antigen is um, a, a protein that causes a reaction and oftentimes is a, an infectious agent, but not always. Um, isn't it true that an adjuvant will, only, will uh, not only bind to the target antigen that's in the vaccine, but also uh, to the impurities and byproducts such as the animal and human parts left in the vaccine or the manufacturing process? You're asking me specifics about physiology um, that I am not, a, that's not my area of expertise. But I'm, there is, so you're not aware that there's a difference between the form of aluminum, so when it's ingested, it's taken up in ionic form, when it's injected, it's in these nanoparticle forms. And in contrast, injected aluminum is our nanoparticles, correct? They're there to create an irritant to the immune system so that the, the vaccine creates antibodies. And so they're actually these nanoparticles that are in the vaccine, right? Or do you not know? You're talking about specifics that are are very detailed. Aren't, and, the, and, aren't and the details important? I mean, you, you said that... Not in this case, because we're talking about a metal. Yeah. It is not concerning to me because the amount of aluminum that we ingest in general, uh, just through our diet, is much higher than what we get through vaccines. There's no reason to believe that that amount, that additional small amount, is anything to be concerned about. So you said that the quantity of ingested aluminum is small, or excuse me, is, is much larger than the amount of injected aluminum, and therefore you deem it safe. Correct. Okay. Are you aware that the, uh, the FDA provides that in terms of inge ingested aluminum, eaten aluminum, 0.3% or less is actually taken up by the blood? Do you know that or not? I, yes or no. I don't know the exact okay. numbers. No. And that if it is, it's taken up in ionic form. Do you understand what I mean? I understand that? what you mean by that. That means in its, in its smallest elemental form, that's how it's taken into the blood, right? Correct. Okay. And, and aluminum in ionic form is not able to cross the blood-brain barrier, correct? I am not aware that that's true. You don't know? I don't know that that's true. Okay. If you don't know, that's fine. And antigens bound to aluminum are taken up by macrophages, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. And macrophages present the stuff they gobble up to the parts of the immune system that create antibodies, correct? I believe so. I, don't, I have not studied the actual mechanism of action. And they also travel to different parts of the body, including correct. the brain, correct? Correct. And they'll deposit the materials they gobble up there. Isn't it true that most package inserts for most vaccines report um, uh, encephalitis or encephalopathy as a reported adverse event from vaccination? I would have to look at all the package inserts to be able to say yes or no to that. It is possible, yes. Do any of the vaccines in the childhood settle contain monkey kidney cells? I do not know. Blood serum from cows? I do not know. Guinea pig cell cultures? I do not know. Gelatin from pigs and cows? I don't know. MRC5 human diploid cells? 
MRC5 human diplomats. Okay. Those are specifics that I typically do are not. You, are you aware that I, MRC5 diploid cells are cells cultured from the lung tissue in a board of fetus? I am aware that there are two vaccines out on the market, the MMR and the VZV, that have um, that use a cell in the production of it, use a cell line um, from aborted fetuses from 1962 and 1966. Those are the only two aborted fetus tissue cell lines that are used. Um, uh, isn't it true that there actually has recently been a new cell line, human cell line from aborted fetal tissue that's been approved for use in vaccines? I'm not aware of that. Okay. And none of those, none of the aborted for fetal tissue culture cell lines actually end up in the vaccine product? The vaccine doesn't have cells in it. The cellular pieces from the aborted fetal That is potentially do, possible, yes. Okay. Isn't it true that in fact there is more of that cellular debris in the MMR, for example, and there is actually antigen. I don't know. Okay. Isn't it true that um, that the uh, Havrix hepatitis A vaccine, the hepatitis A vaccine contains millions of fragments of human DNA? Possible. I don't know. If doctor, isn't it true that Verivax, the chicken pox vaccine, contains approximately one trillion fragments of human DNA? Again, if Dr. Plotkin says it does, then I will agree. Isn't it true that these 74 aborted fetuses had almost every piece of their bodies, including skin, tongue, and heart, cut into little cubes to be used for culture? I'm not aware of any studies that Dr. Plotkin, the specifics of any studies that Dr. Plotkin did. What principles and methods did you rely upon in reaching your opinion regarding vaccine safety? I use the again the recommendations of the CDC and the American uh, the um, Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices and the American Academy of Pediatrics to make form an opinion about the vaccine safety. So your basis, so I'm saying the principal methods that you relied upon of reaching your opinion regarding vaccine safety and vaccine efficacy are what the CDC recommends and and your claim that you've seen some people die of some diseases that for which there are vaccinations. Is that correct? Correct. That's the sum total, right? And the American Academy of Pediatrics recommendations. Okay. So when you're looking at a patient and making the determination as to what vaccines they should receive, what family history factors are concerning to you? Um, one of the big family history factors that I would take into consideration is, is there um, a history of anybody who's immune suppressed? Um, isn't it true that the only polio vaccine used in the United States is an activated polio vaccine, which is injected in muscle? It's an inactivated polio virus vaccine. Right, and it's injected in muscle tissue. Correct. Okay. Versus what we used to be used as an Actually, oral. it's not into the muscle tissue. It's given sub-Q, typically. 